Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Rule the Waves 2, our Italian Let's Play series. And this is part 3, I think it is, in our Let's Play series. It's January of 1901, we're one year into the game, and uh, Italy is building a pretty formidable fleet, I'd like to think. We have six battleships in service with a seventh nearing completion, actually next month. Uh, they're a relatively small design with a short range, but decent, I think, for this stage of the war. They have four 12-inch guns and ten six-inchers. We are also building three heavy cruisers to go along with the, I think it's seven that we already have in service, of the Marco Polo class, which is an 8-inch gunned, 21-knot heavy cruiser. I'd like something a little bit faster, to be honest, but it's relatively decent for its era. It has 16 5-inch guns. That's quite a few 5-inch guns. Um, and then we've got a reasonable number of light cruisers and destroyers. Italy is an interesting country because you don't have a massive budget to play with, but for whatever reason the game spawns the AI countries with a vast inferiority in terms of battleships, so at least that works to our favor. Uh, I think it's a glitch, but that does work to our favor, meaning we don't have to build a huge battle fleet. What we are behind in, though, is heavy cruisers, which I would like to build more of, and we are also behind in light cruisers, which I would also like to build more of. The other thing also is that my designs, the battleships are 18 knots, but the cruisers are 21 knots each, each class, the heavy and lights. That's probably too slow. We probably need like a 23, 24 knot cruiser. We did live stream as Italy uh, when the game first came out, and uh, we fought a war against Russia in that game. And uh, we really struggled because the Russian fleet was largely 23 knots or faster, and our, our ships tended to be slightly less heavily gunned than the Russians, better armored, but slower and um, less well gunned, which meant that even though we had better armor than them, they could close the range, they could dictate the engagement, and things in general didn't go so well for us. So I would like to try and fix that in this particular episode. In fact, our dockyards have expanded to 18,000 tons, so we probably need to build a new battleship class also. Uh, but my money this turn is really going to be focused on heavy cruisers, where we're currently behind. Uh, we have a $2.2 million monthly budget surplus, and we have $36 million in the bank. We also have a $1.5 million uh, per month cost that's going to be going away here in one month. So I do think I want to go ahead and try and uh, expand my cruiser fleet. I'd like to build more light cruisers and more heavy cruisers, uh, but the initial thing that we're going to focus on is a new heavy cruiser design because we have sufficient destroyers at the moment. So first things first, we're going to jump into our ship design. By the way, we haven't researched much in the way of, two techno of new technology yet. We we're up to level 1 machinery, level 1 armor, uh, level 1 range finders, and level 1 hydraulic recoil. But that's it so far, so no breaking game-breaking inventions or anything like that. So let's go ahead and design a heavy cruiser. Let's go ahead and allow the computer to auto-design it at first. And you can see it's going to design a ship with 8-inch guns. Now, I did debate bumping that up a little bit. 8-inch guns at 5,000 yards penetrate 4.3 inches of armor, 3.1 at 10,000. A 10-inch gun heavy cruiser, which is like what we've seen some of the intel suggest the Russians have, uh, has a little bit of deck armor penetration, a slightly better uh, penetration at 9,000 yards, but actually inferior at 5,000 uh, of negative one quality. So I'm actually going to go ahead and build just 8-inch guns because they're the best guns I can put on a heavy cruiser uh, currently. We are also going to keep our 6-inch uh, gun secondary batteries, and we're going to have a tertiary battery of 4-inch guns as well. Uh, those are all going to be in casemates because I can't really afford much more than that. We're going to go with 14 4-inch guns. We really want to make sure these things are not vulnerable to destroyers. So 14 4-inch guns should help along that, that, those lines. Uh, actually, we'll go with 16. The larger tertiary battery should help keep destroyers off us. 3 inches would have a better rate of fire, but 4 inches are really going to be you know, just devastating to any destroyer flotilla. And then the 6-inch gun... Actually, did the 5-inch have 0? No, okay. So the 6-inch guns of negative 1 quality will have 6 of those on each side for 12 total. Now, that is going to mean the ship's going to be massively overweight. We also have a rate of fire reduction on our secondary batteries of 9-inch guns, uh, which is fine. Um, we have some other things we need to fix with this ship. 
First off, uh, our speed of 21 knots, too slow. I'd like it to be 23 knots. So we'll bump it up to 23 knots to kind of mirror what we saw with the Russians. Low freeboard's not acceptable because this thing is going to leave the Mediterranean and operate probably as a forward commerce raider, maybe, maybe on its own uh, if we were to fight the Russians or someone like that in the North Atlantic uh, at long range. Uh, additionally, that 23 knots is going to be bolstered by a 6-inch belt uh, armor. So you can see an 8-inch gun can't even penetrate that inside 5,000 yards, and we want to make sure that's even closer range that it can't penetrate. Uh, so we'll have a 6-inch uh, a, um, a belt. Deck extend or Belt extended 2 is fine. Deck armor 2 inches. Uh, deck extended 1. Conning tower 6. Turrets. S let's make turrets 8. Uh, and then turret top 2. Uh, and secondaries too, so not a lot of armor for the secondaries. That puts us horrendously overweight. Wow! I would have to make this thing a gigantic float. Oh, wow. I don't think I can afford that, uh, but we are going to go ahead and add more torpedoes as well because uh, torpedoes are going to be useful for this heavy cruiser. We need to change the accommodations to normal, and we need to change the range to long, uh, which again means we're going to lose a lot of weight uh, in this ship. Our heavy cruiser before was 9,000 tons, so this one will be 10,000 tons. I don't want to make it much bigger than that, but you can see here that we're not really saving enough weight. Even by bumping it up to 10,000 tons, it's not really saving us any weight. So I think what we'll consider doing is let's drop the secondary uh, guns to 5 inches, and let's drop the tertiaries to 3 inches. And again, that saves us a little bit of weight, but not a ton of weight. Uh, not enough weight, I don't think. Um... So let's do this. Let's drop the belt back to five and a half where it was originally. Let's drop the, uh, God, I can't really save much weight anywhere else. How is this thing so heavy? Maybe we drop the tertiary three inches to 12. We're still 2,000 tons. Good God. I don't want to make this a battleship size. What if I drop it to medium? It saves us 600 tons. It's quite a bit, but not not enough. What about the speed? Yeah, the speed is a, is a killer in weight. I mean, it's basically we were forced to either make a choice between armored or not. Go with 10 and 10 for the secondaries. So it's going to be 5 and 5. Medium range, 22 knots, normal freeboard. How, I swear I had a design that would have worked before. 10,000 tons is pretty large for a heavy, though. And to make this work, it would have to be 12,000 tons. I don't want a 12,000 ton heavy cruiser at this stage in the game. 21 knots, I mean, you could make the argument that with this armor and this armament, 21 knots should be sufficient. Eek. Cramped accommodations? No. Shit. Let's try this again. Let's try another armored cruiser design. Wow, that's small. Um, still 8-inch guns. We'll make it I don't want a low freeboard ship. I don't understand why the game keeps telling that. Let's try 22 knots. Belt armor does not need to be 8 inches. That's ridiculous. So we'll go with 6. Belt extended 2. Deck 2. Deck extended 1. Conning tower 6. Turrets. I'd still like them to be 8. Secondaries can be 2. It's got 10 and 10 for the secondaries. That didn't really change. Why is this ship so small? Even if we bump to 10,000 tons, though, that doesn't really save us anything. And cutting out the tertiary and buffing up on the uh, secondaries doesn't really help us at all either. Good God! Good God, Lemon! Even with cramped accommodations, it doesn't work. Ah! Maybe we should go with a light cruiser at this stage then. Wait, this is a pre-dreadnought. 
not what I, I wanted a CA. Not that it makes much of a difference. Let's go with a light cruiser at the moment then. Let's see. Light cruiser, auto design, four inch guns. It needs to be bigger guns, right? Like, can we do six inch guns? Let's do six inch guns. Uh, three and three on the broadsides, and then one, four, one aft gives us a broadside of five six inch guns on our light cruiser. We'll drop the rounds per gun just a little bit to 140. The tertiary guns, there should be 10 of them. They're going to be three inchers, so it's five and five. Sorry, secondary guns. Five and five. Um, the speed should be 23 knots. The belt on this one's going to be a little bit weaker. I think two inches for belt armor is probably sufficient. Although maybe not. Maybe two and a half is what we really need. The uh, deck armor of an inch is probably enough. Turrets could probably be three. Let's see here. For a similar sized gun, they're, they're safe inside 5,000. And we've got a lot of turrets too. So in the event that uh, that we do get hit. Also, our secondaries won't have a, tur a gun shield. They have no armor. So those can get just knocked out right away. Uh, turret top, one inch. That reflects the deck armor. There's no real plunging fire on this size of shell. So assuming they're fighting light cruisers, there's no plunging fire to worry about. Um, she can make 23 knots. And make her a little bit bigger, but I don't want to make her more than 5,000 tons. Um, central range finder. I guess this is kind of like my ideal... Commerce Raider, right? What if I cut some weight by the port port aft, starboard aft. Let's delete those two. I cut it down to a four gun broadside. Saves us a little bit of weight. Drop the belt armor to two inches. Jesus Christ. We have inefficient ship designers. What if I were to move this to Great Britain? Would that make them any better? No better? In terms of weight savings or anything like this? I just don't see the point. You know what? Let's just fuck... I want to design something new. I was hoping for a heavy cruiser, but jeez... I was hoping for a fast heavy cruiser. Like, I want it 23 knots. I want it normal freeboard. Uh, maybe we have five inch guns. If we go with the uh, eight inch, they can not be penetrated until inside 5,000 yards. That belt feels light. Belt extended, two inches is fine. Deck should be two, though. That's so heavy, though. Conning tower, turrets, secondaries. Drop that weight, drop that, increase these, normal accommodations, medium, still can't do anything. How heavy would it have to be? It would have to be 12,000 tons. That's nuts! Ugh, this episode's just going to be me struggling with ship designs, eh? Oh, don't you know, eh? I guess we could try and drop it to four and a half. Maybe the belt extended. Oh, two's probably fine. Deck is probably... We'll probably get away with one and a half on the deck. There's no real plunging fire at this stage, right? Conning and turrets to five and a half, maybe? We're gradually making compromises. Um, I mean, do I need torpedo tubes? Probably. Made it 22 knots. We could save a lot of weight. So we could make this ship... 8-inch gun, uh, primaries. Um, can we fit more ammo? 
uh, eight inch. Let's do this. Eight inch gun primaries, 120 of them. Two range finders, one four, one aft, central range finder. Secondary guns of five inches, 10 of them. Uh, tertiary guns, 10 three inchers. A whole bunch of torpedoes. Four and a half inch belt armor. That's a little bit light, but uh, I guess we'll have to go with it. Uh, two inch belt extended, one and a half deck. See, the belt is what really bothers me. That is, that basically means as soon as we get under 5,000 yards, that armor is going to get poked, poked, and poked. Um, but just to move it up to five would be an obscene ad- amount of additional weight. Maybe, uh, yeah, we'd have to be over 10,000 tons, I'm guessing. Maybe not. We could cut the uh, ammo per gun to 100. And maybe keep it at... No, even then, I guess we could cut a... Uh, uh, yeah. Par- port, starboard. Port, starboard. Drop the forward tube. So we have four torpedo tubes on this thing. Cut it to... uh, So we could, in theory, get a normal... Can we... What's colonial... I don't even know what colonial service does. So we can have a 9,900-ton heavy cruiser with 8-inch guns, uh, 10 5-inch guns, 8 3-inch guns. It can make 22 knots, so it's slightly faster. It's 9,900 tons, so it's less than 10,000 tons. Four torpedo tubes... I guess we can make a... I, I'm not super sold on this heavy cruiser design, but I guess we'll go with it. It's the Umbria class. It's going to take three months to research. It's going to be, I think, like $3 million a, a, a turn, or maybe $3 million total was, was what we were looking at for the design study. We'll have to see what that comes back as. Um, and then I also think we probably want to design a new light cruiser class, as we were trying to do earlier. Um, maybe with five inch guns instead of six. Actually, let's see here. Four inchers go to one three and just shy of one. Five inchers go to, yeah, five inchers are definitely better. Five inchers are the way to go. So we go with five inchers. Maybe those make 22 knots also. The belt armor should be two, I think. Um, can a six penetrate two? It can. Can penetrate two and a half. A lot of the enemy heavy cruisers are going to have six inches, so maybe we stick with two and a half. Two and a half inch belt, no belt extended. Deck armor will be an inch. Uh, conning tower three, turrets three and a half, turrets one, secondary zero. Uh, we'll go with ten three inch guns as secondaries to go with the uh, eight five inch guns and turrets. We're going to add as many torpedoes as we can. I don't think we can do swivel mounts on non-destroyers yet. Yeah, above torpedo tubes not researched yet, so we can't do those. Um, Okay. So, we've got this ship design here. I really would like to go with 23 knots, but I don't think that's feasible. It's not. Two, three inches on the turrets. We've got a few turrets to spare. How much would it cost in weight to go to 23 knots? We could have, it would be 5,200 tons. It's a little bit heavy, but it can make 23 knots for a light cruiser. Belt armor is 2.5, which gets us almost an inch free. Even if we bump it up to six inch guns, the 2.5 is safe inside 5,000 yards. So the the shells that we might be carrying might be a little bit less, but the armor that we carry lets us close the distance a bit more. The speed of 23 knots hopefully lets us dictate the engagement. The large number of torpedo tubes should come in handy in any war or any battle. The 10 3-inchers should hopefully help keep destroyers off us in combination with the 5-gun broadside of the 5-inch guns. The turret top and deck of 1 inch should be sufficient to prevent any realistic plunging fire we might face. And I think 
I mean, we could go for speed first. We could shrink her down. Go with unreliable engines. Maybe we do that. Maybe we, we sacrifice reliability for just a little bit more speed. And maybe that helps us uh, justify this. Because it lets us cut the size down under 5,000 tons, which I'm really uneasy about a 5,200 ton light cruiser at this stage. It's pretty expensive. Um, medium range is an ideal. Again, I wish it could be a little bit longer. I guess we could... What did I change here? Um, now nah, we'll stick with two and a half for the turrets. It'll be just as well armored as the belt. All right, so that allows us to have uh, this ship at 4,800 tons. Uh, and actually the, the little bit less armor will save us about 40,000 a turn. So that'll be fine. We'll go ahead and save that as the Catania class light cruiser. So it's gonna take two months to research that, three months to research the heavy cruiser, and we'll finally get this episode underway 20 minutes in after ship designing for a while. Our top spy managed to get a hold of the blueprints of the new German light cruiser Stuttgart, currently under construction. That is a light cruiser for sure. 10 four inch guns, doesn't look like any of them are in turrets, or if they are, they have no armor. They only make 21 knots, and they have 4,400 ton displacement. I don't know what the fuck they're doing with the weight on that ship, but that feels like a really inefficient ship design. Our light cruisers would blast the thing to kingdom come. Meanwhile, research breakthrough ship design, heavy secondary batteries, enables secondary guns heavier than seven inches in casemates or single turrets. Nice. Maybe we should build a new battleship design based off of that new breakthrough. Actually, I wonder... I wonder if it lets us... Does that let us do that for heavy cruisers too? Just out of curiosity. Mm. What was the last thing we just researched? Message. Uh... Research, heavy secondary battery, enables secondary guns heavier than seven inches in casemates or single turrets. Oh, heavier than seven inches. Well, that would really only be on a battleship. Okay, good to know. All right, well, let's move forward to uh, the next month then, I think. The uh, Dante Allegari didn't finish completing its construction this turn, so it should finish next turn, though. All right, so it was commissioned to the Navy. Our destroyer, Giuseppe Caesari, is also commissioned into the Navy. You're asked in an interview which nation you see most likely enemy in a future war. What's your answer? We must be prepared to fight a war against anyone. That'll increase our budget and tension across the board. I don't see a war that'll hurt our prestige and tension. Without a doubt, it is... I would assume it's going to be France... France is the country... Actually, I think Austria-Hungary is the country I would most prefer to fight. But I also wouldn't really get any colonies from them. Our latest design of Katina is ready for construction. Go to the build screen. Um, so we'll do that. 4,800 tons. She's about 1,000 tons heavier than the prior design, the Bari class. Um, it'll cost about a, just shy of a million to build one per turn. We will lay four down. Which between the other ships that are completed uh, and the ships that we're laying down, we actually still have a slight surplus uh, in the bank and it's going to take just shy of two years to build these four light cruisers. These four light cruisers will bring our total heavy or light cruiser force to 15, uh, which will bring us on par with Austria. Uh, it'll supersede France. We'll still behind, be behind Great Britain, Russia, Germany, and the United States. But at least the countries that we share the Mediterranean with, Austria, Hungary, and France, will have more than them. Uh, we won't have more heavy cruisers than either of them, though. So 
something to be aware of, but something that I also plan for us to remedy in short order. Meanwhile, we'll spend $3.2 million to continue expanding our docks to be larger than 18,000 tons. Two new destroyers are commissioned into the, into the uh, Navy. An uprising in China makes it necessary to send an expeditionary force. What do you recommend? Send a strong force to safeguard our interests. That'll increase prestige across the board. Or sorry, that'll increase prestige, but also tensions. Uh, multinational force will do what? Keeping out hurts uh, tensions. Multinational force appears to have no effect. Strong force safeguard gives us prestige, but also tensions. All right, so the Umbria-class heavy cruisers are ready as well uh, for construction now. Uh, so, whoops. So let's go ahead, and those are going to cost $1.6 million to build. Uh, we're going to build two, so we'll be in the, in the red by about $2.7 million. Uh, but we can afford to be doing that for more than 10 months. And by the time we start to run out of money, the, uh, the light cruisers that we're building should start coming off the slipways. So we're going to build two of the Umbria class, which are going to kind of be our, uh, the new flagships of that heavy cruiser fleet, um, perhaps strong enough to stand in the battle line with five-inch armor. Probably not. Um, but at least strong enough to operate on their own versus other enemy heavy cruisers uh, without risk of, hopefully, without risk of being defeated. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, you can see tensions are kind of increasing across the board. Nothing too dangerous yet, but something to keep an eye on. Uh, our balance is now negative 2.2 million, and uh, our funds are at 33 million. During maneuvers, one of our ships opened fire on a fishing boat from Austria-Hungary, sinking the boat and killing several fishermen. Uh, what should we do? The boat was fishing in a restricted area, and they suffered con the consequences of their carelessness, offer full compensation, and a public apology. I don't want to take the prestige hit. So we'll do that. Meanwhile, our scientists report they're currently baffled by the problems of destroyers of 600 ton displacement. That's just great. But at least we increased better or we improved the quality of our uh, torpedoes there by increasing the range and speed. Okay, you can see Austria Hungary nudging ahead a little bit of Russia and Great Britain in the tensions meter. The battleship Dante Aligaris finished her working up. Top spy managed to get a hold of a new French light cruiser design, the Jean Bart, which again only has, oh, it does have six inch guns, but there's only four of them. So this kind of justifies our uh, heavier armor placement on our light cruisers. Those six inch guns shouldn't be able to penetrate our armor uh, as essentially, but the, okay, so the enemy has six inch guns, but it also only has two inch belt armor, which means that its six inch guns should be stopped by our two and a half inches of belt until we're within range where our 5-inch guns can penetrate their 2-inch belt. And at that point, the four 6-inchers will be playing about roughly parity with our five 5-inchers, five and we should be able to win any kind of broadside duel there. That's the hope, anyway. Okay, we also managed to get a hold of the Austro-Hungarian battleship design, Franz Ferdinand, currently under construction. Four 9-inch guns. We have 12 inches on ours, 10 six inch guns. We've got a roughly, uh, a similar battery on our ships. They might have slightly better armor. They also have better speed at 20 knots. Eight inch belt, 20 knots. Uh, naval gun research, better five inch gun quality. Huh, that's good. We'll have to upgrade our light cruisers to be able to, to do that. Because our light cruisers currently have, oh, maybe we should just do that now. Open design for rebuild. Yes, use the more... Let's see. The 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 quality 0 5-inch gun can penetrate just shy of 2 inches of armor at 5,000 yards and at just over 1 inch at 9,000. The negative 1... What's the negative 1? 1. 1. 1.2 at 8... 1.7 at 5. 1.3 at 8. 1 inch at 9. So better range and better penetration characteristics. So we'll do that. Now just replacing the guns will take 3 months at 198,000 per month. If we also replace machinery, that'll bump this up to a 10-month project. Um, and... It won't be the machinery isn't it doesn't save us enough weight to allow us to increase the speed at all of our ship. So we're not going to do that. All we're going to do with our redesign is we're going to give them better guns, which will only take three months and one hundred ninety eight thousand 
per month. We're not going to change the machinery or anything else with these ships. It's just a gun upgrade. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then we will rebuild the Bari. We can rebuild the Bari better than she was before. Um, okay, so I'm going to try and rebuild all of these things. So we're going to rebuild our entire light cruiser force. That's 10 light cruisers all going in for refits. Usually refits don't make a lot of sense in this game. Well, not, not, I wouldn't, that's not necessarily fair. Uh, often rebuilds are not worth the cost that they uh, take or the length of time that it takes to rebuild them. However, in this case, three months at 198000 although it looks like the cost might be a little bit more than what I thought, um, and taking four months instead, so the estimate seems to be off. But nonetheless, four months to get better guns and better penetration characteristics, well worth the cost, in my opinion. Um, meanwhile, we are going to go ahead and change the a couple of our battleships Four of our battleships are going to switch over to reserve fleet to save a little... Ooh, that's not, even, that's not very much money at all. Maybe all of our battleships will switch to reserve fleet, and all of our heavy cruisers will switch to reserve fleet to save some money here. We can only save 6.2. Oh, wow. All right, well, we're going to we're gonna take a hit on the quality of our ships here by basically putting all of our capital ships, uh, maybe even all of our destroyers, into reserve status until the other ships are done uh, done construction. We could put them into mothballs. That would save even more money. But I don't want to do that just in the event that some event occurs and war breaks out. So let's go ahead and move forward. The French want to sell us rights of 6-inch guns of quality 0 for 4.2 million. Our current 6-inch guns are negative 1. Uh, I need these guns. The better guns I get, uh, the more we need. So we'll jump that up to quality 0 6-inch guns. You can see our bank account is just evaporating. We caught a spy from Germany, handle it discreetly, maximum publicity. I don't need the budget. I need the budget. I don't need the tensions with Germany, so we'll handle that discreetly. All right, so we did that. One more turn, and our ships finished their reconstruction. So that gets our financial situation back. The Austrian heavy cruiser Frundeberg, two nine-inchers, five-and-a-half belt. The belt armor is similar to what we have, I think. That's a lot of secondaries, though. 14 six-inch guns in their secondaries. We also just researched 600-ton uh, destroyers. That'll be nice. All right, so our light cruisers are all back in action. <laughs> the rest of our fleet is in reserve status. Um, we can switch these guys over to reserve, too. Gets us back in the black. We're back in the black. At least for a couple of turns. I'm sure there's a it's a bad idea to leave your your fleet in reserve status for too long. It's an interesting British battleship design. Meanwhile, we just researched the double bottom. I don't really know what that does. And the Schwaben for the Germans. Yeah. Um four nine inch guns. Okay. Harden eight P penetrator. Okay. So it is now January of 1902. We are two years into our reign at the head of the Admiralty. Uh, ships under construction. We've got a couple of heavy cruisers that are coming up for completion soon. Uh, a couple of heavy cruisers that are still a ways away. And some light cruisers that are about a year away that we'll have in 1903. Our entire fleet is in reserve status. We can't do that long term. We have to go back and activate these guys. We'll put the entire Italian fleet of 55 ships back on active duty. That brings us $2 million into the red. Uh, but the good news is that's only, I mean, that, that'll last, the current balance that'll last us four more months. We'll be almost completing the Marco Polo and the Amalfi and the Pisa around that time period. So we might have to put a ship on pause for a month or so. Um, in fact... What if we just do this for one month so we can bring everything into completion at the same time? That's an American light cruiser with 10 6-inch guns, but it also has some in double turrets, which is interesting. By the way, our spies are bringing home all sorts of information about enemy shipping. Weight savings on new weight hull techniques and new shells. Wow, all right. Our, our researchers are breaking, 
breaking stuff through literally every every couple of minutes here. All right, so we have just shy of enough money for five months now at the current build rate. All three of these heavy cruisers will be done in six months. It is February of 1902, uh, and that's the second year as Italy. We kind of fuddled around with some new ship designs. We did settle on a couple of new ship designs, the Catina class light cruiser, of which we're building four, the Umbria class heavy cruiser, of which we're building two, plus the three Pol Marco Polo classes. That's going to bring our heavy cruiser fleet to 12. We can see here the French have 15. They're building five more. The Austrians have seven. They're building five more. All of these guys are building tons of heavy cruisers. They seem to really favor the heavy cruiser. They're not building anywhere near as many battleships. One battleship for the Austrians under construction. They only have two now. Three for the French. They already have three. That'll still leave them all behind us in terms of number of ships, although the average tonnage is a little bit greater, at least on the French side, not so much on the uh, Austrian side of my... My eyes tell me, right, the Russians are building six battleships. They seem to really be prioritizing those things. Meanwhile, our destroyer flotilla probably could get a new design, too, since we just researched 600-ton destroyers, so we can do a little bit more with that weight. Uh, if we look at the research here, uh, we're kind of leveled everything out at one. Uh, nothing else really kind of making much progress. Our naval guns, we improved the quality of our 6-inch guns, our 5-inch guns uh, as, as well uh, this turn. Um these guys have six inches, so it'd be kind of interesting to open uh, the design for rebuild. Uh, what if we just increase the quality of these guys? If we just wanted to increase the quality of our secondary guns. Uh, it would take four months at about a million a turn. Who knows if that's true? Remember, that was off by about 200,000 and a month last time. Uh, what about if we replaced machinery that would instantly jump it up to a, a full turn? And it wouldn't really save as much in terms of weight. So probably doesn't make a lot of sense to do that. Might make sense to upgrade the guns, though, the secondary guns from negative 1 to 0. Uh, that could be a pretty considerable advantage for us. But we'll have to think through that next time. Meanwhile, guys, we've been going for about 35 minutes now, so I think actually at this point, at the start of 1902, with the, th with the additional docks being uh, complete next month and with several other ships almost completed, we're going to go ahead and wrap this episode up, call it, a, call it to a close. Tensions are still... This, this has been a really slow burn so far for this game. A lot of times by this point, I would already be at war with someone, but I'm not. My tensions have, or my prestige has gone up three since the start of the game. So without a war, that's actually not a terrible, uh, terrible accomplishment. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Anyway, guys, 1902, we're not yet to the Dreadnought era. We're working on our technology, uh, and we will catch you guys next time. Until next time, though, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out. <laughs>